Namaste. Now we will learn about the sampling theorem. So uh, what actually the sampling theorem means whenever we have any continuous signal. Okay, I'm going to draw that kind of signals and all. So okay, now here we have one continuous signal. For example, if we have something like this, then this signal which cannot be understand by our digital circuits because it's continuous and time that means infinite number of uh, points in between from this to this so we just need to discretize it before that means the digitalize it before uh, uh, we are proceeding with uh, further that means the digital circuit so what we have to do means uh, we need to sample this signal to get its uh, uh, discrete signal sampling is just like uh, uh, converting of this type of signal into uh, the discrete uh, time signal that means uh, for example now uh, this signal can be right like this so in discrete form so this is called as the sampling of the signal any continuous signal into the discrete signal so for that we are using the sampling theorem or which is called as the Nyquist theorem uh, this Nyquist theorem it uh, states that whenever we are making sample or taking the samples like this, that means uh, from this continuous to this discrete uh, domain, that means the discrete time, both are in the time domain. So uh, whenever we are taking into the discrete uh, time signals, then as per this theorem, uh, okay, so we are sampling this continuous signal in order to get like this. So uh, whenever the okay uh, I'm going to show whenever we have the three or more signals like this okay so here I have one signal like this and uh, another I have something like this and another I have something uh, uh, like this okay and take energy signals uh, then uh, we know the basic signal representation is by uh, okay for example x equals to a1 cos uh, uh, omega t this is any basic signal representation okay this is just a1 okay a1 this is the amplitude and the cost of uh, uh, the frequency angular frequency into t so here this omega is uh, uh, 2 pi f that we know so uh, this is x1 and similarly for this one x2 equals to uh, a2 cos omega t and x3 equals to a3 cos omega t this is just a signal representation so whenever we have the signals like this so uh, if we combine these signals then we are just going to get uh, x of uh, uh, t or okay so x1 x2 x3 is that so x of uh, t equals to x1 plus x2 plus x3 that is uh, a1 cos omega t plus a2 cos omega t plus a3 cos omega t so on okay if you have the more signal than this so on so uh, here what we just have to do means uh, uh, okay I'm just going to take these three signals uh, and uh, I'm going to take the uh, sum that means the resultant of these three signals that sum of these three signals then uh, I'm going to get uh, okay so let's see now I get the sum of all these three signals Okay, I'm just going to use some color. Okay, the sum of all these three signals, I'm going to get like, uh, uh, let's say, for example, like uh, this. Then uh, I need to convert this signal into the discrete time signal like this. So, uh, and from this discrete time signal, okay, so in order to get back this original signal, this continuous signal has to be sampled with the frequency okay so this one have one frequency and this is one have different frequency and these three uh, we took the three signals those have different different frequencies so now we added these three signals and uh, we get this resultant signal and uh, uh, we converted that to sum in that means in uh, discrete uh, time signal so this signal can be understood by our digital systems that means in digitally we have to uh, give this signal because uh, this analog signal is not understand by the uh, processors or anything so we need to give this discrete signals so 
but uh, the theorem states that this Nyquist theorem states that uh, in order to make or this convert from this continuous to the discrete time signal okay uh, we have to convert in such a way that the sampling frequency that means whatever we are sampling like this uh, this signal may be converted like this or it may be converted by taking the more number of samples more number of discrete samples or it may be like okay so uh, this is my resultant signal okay i may convert this continuous signal into discrete signal like this okay one example is like this here i have three and this downside uh, i'm going to make like this okay so this one example and another one i'm going to take very less samples like uh, here only one sample and here only one and here only one here only one and even i can take like this uh, that means some more number of samples like this okay like this but this theorem states that uh, just look at these diagrams okay this diagram and this one and this one so if you have two less number of samples then is it possible to reconstruct this original signal okay this is my original signal so is it possible to reconstruct this original signal from this discrete time signal no because uh, one may draw like this okay one uh, i'm going to draw like this now so is this one and this one look similar no right no so what we can think that if we make the discrete points that means the in discrete time domain if we take the large number of samples then uh, if we uh, take back or if we convert back this discrete to our original signal then that is uh, that means we can exactly reproduce what our original signal is otherwise the data is lost if we take two less samples we are unable to reproduce see here you can see i'm going to reproduce this as like this so this wave and this is our original signal is completely different so what this Nyquist theorem states is uh, whenever we are taking like this that means from continuous to the uh, discrete time signals uh, we need to sample this continuous time signal in such a way that the sampling frequency is to be greater than or equals to two times the maximum frequency that means previously we have uh, okay i think uh, yeah it is not available here so previously we have we took the three signals so in that those three have different different frequencies but after the adding all those three signals we get this signal our original signal final signal so we need to sample this in such a way that uh, the sampling frequency that means in some frequency we are uh, converting that to the discrete signals so that has to be greater than or equals to two times the maximum frequency that means we have three frequency right in that maximum frequency two times that of the maximum frequency if we sample like that then uh, we may get like this we are not getting like this so if it is greater than or equals to two times the maximum frequency then we are getting some more number of samples so we can exactly reproduce this original signal otherwise we are unable to reproduce the original signal from this um, discrete eyed signal that's what this theorem says so uh, okay let's visualize that in the skylab so okay this is my skylab i just go to okay skylab or skylab and think uh, i just have to create one new file okay so uh, first of all what we are going to do uh, i just write uh, uh, sampling theorem o r e m sampling theorem so in the sampling theorem uh, first we need uh, that means the three signals amplitude and as well as the frequency because we have the formula x of t equals to uh, that means uh, that yeah any signal means it's like um, a1 cos omega t plus a2 cos omega uh, t like that so we need to ask the user or we need to just uh, provide the amplitude and the frequency of the signal so okay input 
and uh, so I'm just going to uh, enter enter the amplitude of uh, first signal okay so this we need to store in some variable so I'm just going to call this as x1 it, no we just call this as a1 okay a1 because this is the amplitude so a1 and similarly uh, okay now we will just consider the uh, three signals as like I told in the way so a1 a2 and a3 so enter the amplitude of the second second signal and uh, so here we have uh, third signal uh, okay now uh, we ask the user to enter the amplitude of all those signals now we need to ask the user to enter the frequency of these signals so i'm just going to call this as f1 equals to uh, okay input uh, enter the frequency enter the frequency of uh, first signal and similarly uh, okay similarly we need to ask the user to enter the uh, okay this is f2 and f3 now we have the three signals now what we have to find means uh, uh, x of t okay i'm just going to call this as okay x of t x of t is the resultant of uh, these three signals so that will going to be uh, x1 of t okay i'll just write in the comment okay so here this will be x1 of t that's my first signal plus uh, x2 of t and uh, plus x3 of t so in order to get this okay x of t uh, equals to x1 of t means uh, uh, a1 a1 cos omega t that's the signal signal representation so i just need to call this as a1 uh, star uh, cos of uh, omega omega means it's 2 pi f so 2 star uh, pi so percentage pi uh, then f1 okay uh, now we got the our first signal and uh, we just need to add this so plus a2 okay a2 cos 2 pi f2 i think uh, i just left the t okay star t we just write the star t because uh, 2 pi f t right star t and uh, okay uh, then plus uh, okay so here this has to be a3 cos 2 pi f3 star t uh, I think I can make like this. Okay, start T. So now what is T? T means uh, okay. So uh, let's see here. So whenever I have a uh, any signal like this, so okay, this is my signal. Okay, now uh, I just added x1, x2, x3. Now we have the signal. So this is my time, right? This is my time. So this time is varying from. Uh, zero so it is continuous signal so zero to infinity like I don't know at what time it will going to end so uh, In order to sample this we need to take like this. Okay one one signal That means uh, I'm just uh, consider the time as one unit. Okay one. This is uh, uh, Okay, this is at time one and this set time two and this set time three like this so uh we are going to sample only this much okay or okay only uh, like this this much we are going to sample or like only one period then that's exactly the same okay for example take the sine wave and all that's going to be repeated so uh okay so what i'm basically saying is uh, the t uh, is varying from uh, zero to okay uh, zero to uh, t is varying from 0 to 1 okay we will take like this and the interval we need to take uh, interval like here you can see this first interval second third like this so many intervals so here from here 0 to 1 means here 0 0.001 0 0 0.002 like that if we take we have to take the internals 
in its time interval. So that has to be in the middle, that is uh, 0 0.001. Okay, so this is our uh, uh, time now. Okay, time. So then uh, I just made the, I got the signal now. So uh, now we need to ask the user to enter our sampling frequency because we need to sample it. Uh, okay, so again, I input uh, enter the sampling frequency. So then this I have to store in some, okay, FS. I'm going to call this as FS, sampling frequency. Okay, uh, we just ask the user to enter the sampling frequency. Uh, I think, uh, okay, this has to be not there because uh, if you put, uh, it will not going to display in the uh, console. So yeah, now it's proper. Uh, now the user enters the sampling frequency. Now we just need to sample our uh, signal. That means we got uh, something like this, our resultant signal. We just need to sample this to some discrete time signals. So uh, for that, okay, uh, we have now FS. Uh, we need time period. T equals to one divided by FS. This I think you hope now. Uh, then. Uh, okay, then we need uh, uh, Okay, again, we need the, the interval because uh, uh, whenever we are sampling this so uh, We are sampling depending upon our sampling frequency That means if the sampling frequency is more we are getting the more intervals like this more intervals if the sampling frequency is more that means we can easily reconstruct our signal so here the n has to be uh, 0 to fs that means that much number of uh, samples we are doing okay so then uh, so we just find the nt that's equals to n star t i'm going to tell this why we need so this okay yeah then uh, here we have the signal x of t so similar to this this statement now we need to sample our signal depending upon this frequency that means fs so what we have to do means uh, uh, this is our sampled so i'm just going to call this as xn okay so here a1 cause these uh, these things remain same because uh, that's also the same that means the same signal we are using so a1 cos 2 pi f1 so here uh, instead of f1 we are sampling at which frequency fs fs into uh, okay nt is this correct okay we will check whether this will be going to correct or not uh, okay then here uh, fs into nt uh, okay then uh, okay uh, just move this then here 2 pi then uh, fs into uh, okay n and nt okay already nt uh, now uh, we will uh, uh, plot we will plot the signal and see okay so for plotting we need uh, figure so then uh, then we need plot what I have to plot so first of all this resultant signal so this resultant signal has to be plot that means yeah this signal so in the x-axis that is time so this t t I have to pass so t and uh, in the y-axis that is our signal that is x of t now we will check whether uh, it's correct or not we'll just execute this uh, I'm just going to save this as uh, so try then okay we'll just check and uh, uh, okay I think uh, okay I start to execute this okay enter the amplitude of the first signal uh, I'm going to call this say amplitude as uh, 4 then enter the amplitude of second signal that's 5 and 6 uh, frequency of the first signal 
that we just take as uh, uh, 6 and 8 okay this has to be second okay we just miss that frequency of the second signal 8 and uh, frequency of the third signal be 10 now uh, okay sampling frequency that uh, I'll just give this as a something 8 now we will just check at the graph uh, okay now oh, okay yeah this is our resultant uh, graph we are getting the graph uh, but now we need to sample this signal okay, we need to sample this signal and we need to look at this graph so for that I'm just going here and uh, what I have to do uh, okay this is uh, uh, figure one I mean first figure and the second one is uh, figure two and I'm just going to plot uh, okay so this is the continuous signal that's why I use the plot but here the discrete so plot to d3 plot to d3 what I have to plot so uh, the that means the x-axis is n okay because it's a uh, discrete time signals here we have that n is 0 to fs then the y-axis will be our x underscore n because this one so okay uh, now we will check uh, whether we will going to uh, okay I just forgot the uh, CLC clear variables that one so we just tried so CLC means the clear this console and uh, clear in order to clear the variables and uh, 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 CLC and close that means close if any graphical window so now we just run this yeah uh, enter the amplitude okay I just make this one correction here uh, this is to be second and this is to be three so now we will again rerun this amplitude of the first signal is uh, four five and six and frequency be uh, eight ten and twelve anything okay so now sampling frequency uh, I'm just uh, okay so here the greater is the twelve I just need to give the two times the grid frequency so two times the 12 is uh, 24 so I'm just going to give as 30 now we will see uh, guess something went wrong we are getting like this something went wrong uh, okay we will just debug it what is went wrong I think uh, uh, okay this here here is something went wrong so not here okay uh, here something went wrong so I think here we have to give uh, f1 and uh, f2 and f3 because uh, we are these signals are not uh, the that means these signals actually they have some frequencies this one and this one this one and that signal we are sampling so instead of fs we need to give f1 that original frequencies let's see now whether we are going to get or not okay i think uh, yeah now it's closed so uh, i'm just going to give the same thing that's uh, uh four and uh, uh okay four five and six then uh, eight uh ten and twelve and uh, the sampling frequency will be 30. we'll check it now yeah now we got so here we can see our original signal is like this so uh, if you look at this discrete signal I can able to reconstruct my original signal uh, okay we, uh, I'm just going to show how is like that so uh, here I have uh, okay so if I have like this here we can see uh, if I just draw from uh, okay from here I'm just going to start so okay like this and uh, like this I can uh, draw so I can able to reconstruct the signals I think you understand this so if you complete like this which is similar to this one but uh, uh, if you give our sampling frequency as uh, uh, very less like uh, okay I'm just going to read on this 
uh, okay this I have removed right uh, I'm gonna remove that yeah, I think yeah uh, now again I rerun this program now uh, enter the okay this is 5 and this 6 and this 7 and this 8 10 and uh, okay 12 now I'm just going to give the frequency which is not greater than or equals to the maximum two times the maximum frequency. I'm just going to give this as a seven. Okay. Now we will see this graph. This is our original signal and this is my discretized signal. So can we able to reproduce this original signal from this discrete time signal? No, right. So uh, I think you hope understand this so what I'm going to say through the sampling theorem uh, and here I think it's better if we move this line to the middle so for that uh, that is one simple technique that is the uh, we need to while plotting okay remember we need to give the title x-axis what x is representing all those things but for time being I'm just going to just show you how we can get the that line to the middle a11 equals to or any variable equals to uh, gca okay gca means that we're going to get that axis so now uh, what i have to do means a11 dot x okay a11 dot uh, uh, x axis i think uh, x axis equals to origin O R I G I N origin then A12 no A11 dot Y uh, I think uh, this is to be X location we will check X location and Y Y location equals to O R I G I N uh, we will just check it now uh, okay I'm just going to run and uh, uh, signal is uh, 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 and 10 and 12 so something we can see will be 24 uh, yeah uh, this is the that okay I think uh, what happened yeah uh, now we can see that GCA get access location that method works so here it shifts and here also it's better if you uh, the similar what we did for here that one just use for this axis to shift this axis in the middle okay that's it this is what the sampling theorem will going to uh, say okay i think you have understand this okay even programmatically we can uh, uh, construct the original signal from those discrete samples uh, that we'll just see now uh, so for that uh, now we uh, what we did means we have a continuous signal that we converted to discrete signal so we need to convert that a discrete signal back to the continuous signal so for that uh, first we uh, okay so I'm just going to define one variable called XM uh, now what we did means we just sampled our continuous signal only by taking the just one one interval that means uh, like if we have the same wave then this much we just made so what we have to do means we need to interpolate that to the uh, like whole signal so for that i'm just going to call uh, use this uh, spleen uh, spell and spleen function so this will going to take the two arguments that's one is the uh, whatever we found it here xn that means our discrete time samples and another one is this nt so the total number that means uh, uh, the total number of uh, uh, time that means the time uh, constant or uh, uh, if we have the that sampling frequency how many uh, in like small small individual uh, time duration we took okay that one we need to pass so here nt and uh, other one is the x underscore n okay then uh, Okay, I'm just going to use any other variable. Now we need to interpolate this. So, T R P O L A T E interpolate I N T E R uh, I N T E R P O L A. I think uh, uh, 
intrap inter intrp okay this is the function inter intrp so here uh, i need to pass uh, okay this one xm and uh, even i need to pass this nt okay nt uh, nt two times okay and t then uh, uh, another one is the our signal that is x underscore n uh, then even x underscore n then uh, okay another one is our uh, this one that is the x underscore n and this xm okay what is our splint function now we need to float this xr so for that i'm just going to use this one so this is again the continuous signal so plot uh okay t uh, t okay so but here we are joining those whatever we are getting the in discrete uh, discrete signal that we are joining so here it is has to be n that we used here n and uh, here uh, xr Okay, so now uh, before plotting what I have to do and it just create a figure figure of a three okay now we just run this uh, enter the sequence x of n that is uh, oh no sorry I think uh, I run all the programs uh, okay uh, I'm just going to make okay this back i just need to plot this uh okay, i'm just going to run this and uh, this will be five six and seven and eight ten and twelve and this should be 30 okay or anything that is greater than so now uh here we can see this is my original signal and this is my discretized so whenever I just joined like this so i'm going to get like this look at this this and this one last one that is somewhat similar so if you have very less number of samples then uh, uh, this signal can't be preserved like this so that will become just like some different waves so we lost the information that's what this necrosphere says i think you've understand it thank you